Now I'd like to make a motion that we open this meeting. I'll second. GHDB. Okay, Member Olson. Uh, yes. Member McBride. Yes. Member Evans. Yes. Chair Pollock. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, does anybody need to recuse themselves for any reason? I don't need to recuse, but I do have a hard stop. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, we're all here. Uh, we uh, uh, wanted to devote this meeting to the review of the plans that were uh, different than, than what we had approved. We originally saw plans that look like this. And so we're here to just have a complete review of that. Barrow Architecture did a, uh, a uh, review of them independent of this and made some notations. Uh, these guys are here to uh, cover that in architecture speak and uh, uh, give us give us a feeling for uh, what they are. And incidentally, I had sort of uh, separated them, you know, blue, red, yellow, and green. Sort of go down, they listed them that way, and I thought we covered those. We've got a good part of this out. But, so I, I turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm Chris DeMarzo from uh, Pittsburgh Canal Site Properties. I appreciate your time and making this special meeting. Uh, I have Craig Jensen with me, Dirk Schneider with me from CJS Architects. I'm going to go over the, the plans with you. I also have Chris Nadler, my attorney, and my daughter Lauren is here checking things out. Just, too. <laughs> just we better be on our good behavior. Yeah. Okay. I'm so, sorry, it's Craig? Uh, Craig. 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 I'm, I miss your name. Dirk. Thank you. Dirk Schneider. He was at a lot of the, the uh, meetings early on, and he's been integral in the construction documents. Right. So, thank All you. Right. Or yours. All right. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I think we'll go over the four different, you know, kind of color coded uh, modifications that you've uh, seen based on the barrel markups. I guess just before I start that, I'm going to be really brief. Sixteen. Really? Right. Oh, we're not complaining. No, well, well, we want to get through it though. So, um, you know, when we got the original approval, I think everyone understood that there were going to be some improvements and modifications that take, would take place. You guys have commented about windows and, you know, the idea that we should try and look for some additional improvements in the area of windows. There may have been some other things that you guys were hoping for as well. And in the barrel letter, I think, uh, you know, they did acknowledge that, you know, that process that we go through going from concept to a set of construction documents like this is going to involve some evolutionary changes. And, you know, the intent is to make those changes positive, not negative, obviously, and to make it a better project as we take it from, you know, the, the schematic design to the construction documents. And that's what we intend, intended to do, and I think what we've done, and I think as I walk you through these, I think you will hopefully see that that is the case. Um, I think that short uh, introduction, I think I will go from there. So, does anyone have a copy of yep. these that you're going to refer yep. to? Yes. Or we'll start with building building one. Actually, yeah, if, it's, whatever you want. if it's okay, I want to go by, because I'm going to pass this out because it's going to make it a little easier, I think. Okay. I don't know if, uh, if that's going to, I know it's. Uh, it may be a little confusing, but I think it's going to speed things up. So we spent our last meeting going over the windows. Is that what okay. I believe, correct? Like, yeah. so from from my perspective, I am most concerned about the massing articulation. Okay. So in terms of how we deviate our time, I feel like we gave a whole lot of time concerned windows. I don't need to speak for my colleagues, but this is my area of concern. If you could hear your comments. That All right, great. that's the blue. Okay. Yeah, so the hard stuff. Yeah. do you want me to not talk about windows? Uh, and the 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 just, just hit it quick. I'll touch them really quick. So the first column on the little sheet I handed out shows okay. number one, one of the rest, I want to go to the sort of shows the number of windows on each of these buildings on the north, south, east, and west elevations, okay. and it shows where we were and where we are now. And you can see, this is based on our count, so we have to go through and verify, fairly count windows. We had 387 windows before, we have 400 now, 
if you look at you know the comparisons on any of the elevations, you can see where these were either added or subtracted. If, if there's a concern about that, I can show you you know the existing elevations, obviously in the new, and you can look and say, okay, you know this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. You know there are some discernible differences. We don't necessarily think they're negatives. We just think there are changes that have evolved. And we evolved because we also make better flow plans and are more efficient. And so some of the windows changed because there were no bedrooms, so it was efficient to go out overall. When there was a kitchen at one elevation, they just flipped over to the other side, so it was just moved from A to B. So. So this is a representation of <laughs> this is a color representation of the of what barrel we um, Yeah, got right. it. Okay. So it's just a little easier to look at color yeah. versus color as opposed to this versus that. If you want to look at one or another elevation in greater detail. Yeah. And there's more detail on these than there is on those because the drawings of the wall, you know, show it. Um balconies the same way, you know, I just did a comparison of the balconies that we had during the food one, what we have currently. Most of the deletions actually happen on the east and west sides, like where two buildings come together, like we're building one building to block one another. You know, we eliminated some balconies in that kind of central zone because those are pretty close and it just seems like a little uncomfortable to have relationships that close. In a couple of cases, we eliminated a balcony from one of two sides of a room, like we had a balcony on two sides of the living room, you know, with no place for the TV and it just doesn't lay out well, so we eliminated one or the other. But you can see generally, Similar, although we are down about 12 hours. Like I said, most of those are in those interstitial spaces between between the things. We can come back to that if you would like. Uh, I'm going to go on to the materials. So as far as materials are concerned, there are a few changes. I tried in this little sheet that I handed out to highlight some of the more significant ones. So the first one that you see under approval where it says horizontal FC, which stands for fiber cement mm -hmm. slash natural wood. We, uh, this is on the north side, we no longer have the natural wood on the north side of building one, but we added natural wood to the north side of building two. You can see the, the similar color mm -hmm. on building two that's highlighted. So we've kind of moved that to the building because we thought having a kind of a range of it across the facades was better than putting it all on building one. Mm -hmm. We did keep it on the east side of building one. You'll still see it says, Three, three lines down in building one, it says horizontal uh, fiber cement and natural wood in the green there. Mm -hmm. And that's currently the same. You can see it's a read across vertical fiber cement and natural wood. So, you know, we traded one location, we kept the other location. Similar with the brick, you know, on the uh, building one, we had brick at a stair tower on the back side, and now we have vertical fiber cement. Uh, that was because the stair tower went from a masonry stair tower, like a Happy block stair tower to a wood stair tower. So now instead we have more masonry on the base of building three. So we added masonry to the base of building three. And Barrel picked up on that. They they, you know, if you look at these drawings, they show on building two the loss of brick on this stair tower. But then they come back on building three and they recognize the expansion of masonry on building three. So I mean, I look at it as a kind of a trade. It wasn't necessarily thought of that way. It's again, the way the building is evolved. So why was that switched? Then? Well, we switched because when we were able to build that stair tower out of wood instead of masonry, the concrete block, yeah. there was no way to support brick on all sides of it. It would have been very difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. So it just made more sense to do the tower out of fire. Cement. So we lost it for practical reasons. I mean, really from an engineering, with you, it was just a more practical way to do it. But then we're building three of all, and we extended this common space across, it made sense to extend the brick that was on the one side of the elevation over to the side. So they weren't linked, but one, in my mind, kind of balances the other. They, they weren't linked. Right. And during our continuous design, we wanted to make sure that we ourselves would keep the balance of materials. Yeah, so if you're losing something, you kind of want to try and get it back somewhere else. And this right. kind of just played out that way. Can you guys just discuss real quickly from the sketch drawings to the construction drawings, the different, um, the different 
processes that you need to go through to do that. For example, the, the structural, so, and yeah. the floor plans, all that. So can you just talk about that for a second? So, so they understand sure. how you, the reasons why you did these. Yes. Right. So we're refining the floor plans, recording the structural and mechanical. We're working on all the floor, floor heights so they work with the structural. We're dealing with you know the flashing between flat roofs and gable roofs, and also the, the framing thicknesses of all the various floors. We're inputting where there's masonry walls versus where there's wood frame walls. All these things kind of tweak the building a little bit here and there. And so then we're adjusting to those things as we go. And like Dirk said, with some of the floor plan refinements, you know, where we thought we had a kitchen and may have shifted, so then we had window changes and things like that. So all these things are tweaking it to a small degree. I mean, I think when you look at these elevations, it's very consistent, but there are changes. Yeah. There are changes. All the green that I highlight under material modifications are unchanged in my mind, with the exception that we switched some of the horizontal siding to vertical siding. The thought was that the vertical siding is really more industrial and more kind of barn-like and a little bit more of a kind of canal site commercial character than the horizontal siding. We still have plenty of horizontal siding as you look through the drawings, but we did change it in a few places. So it's not a material change that is either costing Chris more or costing him less, it's just a decision we made to try and make the project better. Mm -hmm. It's more vertical, less vertical. But there's still a wide range of that. Um, but any of the green highlighted items are what I see as, you know, just not substantial changes, just these minor tweaks to make it better. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the material uh, that, that's about the, some of the material things that uh, that Bureau identified. Do you have any questions about those or those are well projected? I can show you where the natural wood is on the two elevations that you're interested in. And I have a I have a question for uh, the architects. Could you describe uh, they Barrow raise a the issue with the Parklex wood? Like, yeah, that's what I call it, natural wood. Yeah, we're looking at describe that uh, Parklex and why it is a appropriate substitute for real wood in this case. The reason we think it's appropriate is because from a distance you wouldn't know you won't know the difference. When you get you have to go up and touch it to really figure it out. And over time, it's going to perform much better. It's going to look good. It's going to hold its color, and the natural wood is going to lose its color and it's going to turn gray or material over time. So we just think it's going to give you a better overall look. Um, you know, not only on day one, but but into the future. Uh, that, that's the reason we're, we're using it. It's not anything other than we think long-term performance is going to be better. Is it a, as all, at all as durable as real wood when real wood's painted? Oh yeah, it's, it's more durable. The finish is integral to the product. so. The finish won't deteriorate or, or fade or you know lose its kind of color, and the durability is greater than than real wood, so it will be there a long time. Okay. Questions on materials? This no? All good. Okay. All right. All right, we can come back to that next time. Okay, so then the massing and articulation, my last column. Uh, requires probably a little more explanation, but uh, I'm going to go with the easy ones first. So if you look at my column there. For this one, do you mind when you're done to show the Oh, yeah, no, I can certainly do that. Let me explain okay. a few of them, though. So in the kind of red or pink color here, you know, we had a uh, stair tower on the southeast corner of building one that had a flat roof, and we had a uh, stair tower on the southeast corner that had a gable roof. And we basically flipped them. So you can see the pink southeast stair flat goes to southwest stair flat in the current, and southwest stair in the yellow for the gable goes to southeast stair. So we basically just took the gable roof over here and over there, and vice versa. And you can see that. Here, here. This is building one. It's building yeah. one. Yeah. So then when it, you know we just we just flipped them. There's there's no other. Well, the gable was in the middle then. No, there was one. It was here versus here. So we basically just took these yeah. two and okay. flipped them. Yeah. So that was one of her comments. Um, another one of her comments in the green, we have a little projecting bay sticking off the end of the building. 
uh, that was done for structural reasons. So there's this little bay that sticks off the building. This happens actually on building one and building two. It was really done to align our four-door structure all the way through to the end of the gable, uh, I think. Or maybe it was other structure. No, that was um, for the structure in the basement. The oh, that's nice. below. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The way to optimize our framing and the steel down below, we needed to cover our two uh, joints. And instead of just relying on how we move the building and the rope over there to have more longevity and uh, safer building. So we will be getting water that's coming in a few years out in the, in the garage level. So we extended that out, but only because we were worried, we were concerned about the volume as well. We only moved it out to one story and put a little shed roof on it again. The couch, I think, with that look of an organic growth of this uh, whole development. Uh, but it was really driven by the structure of framing underneath where we had joints in the two different concrete groups. So that one relatively minor. So then the other one that she pointed out were the changes to the gables. Um, in some cases they got higher, or in some cases the angles changed. And I'm going to try and walk you through how some of that happened. So in this plan of building one, you can see these little blue dots that are added here, and these mm -hmm. little blue pieces. Those are little ads to the footprint of the building. And the reason we added those was so that we could get the what, gable. What page you have? No, this is uh, his own I don't have handouts for this one. Yeah. Right. So, um, so the reason we did that was so we could get this corner wall, which is a bearing wall, to align with the end here and the end here. Because we wanted the gable basically to rest on this point and this point all the way through. So, well, it's, it's mostly to, to align, it's to align this edge right here, that point, with this wall that goes right through the middle of the building. So that when yeah, you, yeah. So, so we're bearing on this point and this point for the gable cross, right? So we add this little space. Unfortunately, you add this little space, your gable gets a little bit taller because now your gable starts from, well, from not from here to here, but from here to here, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So effectively, we made that triangle. By the triangle, it got a little, little bigger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You made a bigger triangle, so that it gets a little taller. So that's one component. But of that's just roof pitch, isn't it? Well, the pitch stays the same. It's kind of like you have a gable that's like this, and right. now we we added we did that, right? So now my gable is like that because I just added this amount of space. You know what I'm saying? Which does well, make you, it higher. Okay. Right. Oh. You know what I'm saying? By by changing the plan dimension by So you get this differential here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So if you don't change the But angle, that's only if you wanted that. Well it doesn't it's, it's not have angle. to be. Yeah, no. that's what I'm saying is angled pitch could be lower. No, we could lower the pitch. That's yeah. correct. And we could but so you could do that. You could basically say, Well, we're not gonna do this. We're gonna lower the pitch to get back down to that. The pitch is a standard because that's what's affecting the height. That's it's correct. The yeah, the we didn't change the we didn't change the angle. We just did this, which means they be high. I mean, what right. you say in a typical six, twelve, seven, twelve, and not mm. six, seven, three, four. Yeah, yeah. so four it's a work. it's a standard break, you know, for a roof, right? Okay. As opposed to something you used to. Do. And the difference is very slight. But when you take this difference and you add it to, we also, in order to get the floors to frame out correctly. We added four inches to each of the uh, four sections, the framing, right? So each of the floors got four inches higher. So now you've added a foot here, you've added a little bit here. There's a little difference now between the flat roof and the gable roof, just to make the flashing work, like that intersection of those two roofs. Yep. So they're coming together like this, they might come together like this. So you have a little bit of space there. So all these little changes, and these are really little. I mean, this is not much. Obviously, you can see it's a very small model. Right. Well, they all add up, right? Right. Um, so that's how our building starts to get a little taller. Um, we did make some other. Well, what are the ceiling heights in there? So nominally, what would that be? If you were, I mean, finished. Mm -hmm. Finished ceiling height was nine six. Nine six. Which you know would be nice. Across all floors, or just the top floor? No, the third floor. All floors. Not in like powder rooms and other kind. Of, yes, yeah, so we're dropping it from the top yeah. floor. Right? Yeah. Um, so all those little things add up. And then, you know, we did, as, as she noted, we made some other articulation changes where we're adding some details. Mm -hmm. and things. Those don't change the overall height, but, but these things change the overall height. So, um, 
Um, and it also goes, talk, goes towards the canal commercial look mm -hmm. that bond. Right, right. Exactly. exactly. To and further your style. And the ceiling heights, we also wanted to make sure that we have a appropriate ceiling height if those industrial buildings converted. We didn't have an eight or eight foot six ceiling height. They all were a little bit taller in the ceiling. So, um, and it goes along with the bigger windows too. You have these big windows that are six feet high. Mm -hmm. You can't just put the ceiling right at the top yeah. of the window. You're just one on a space. What's a standard apartment? Uh, yeah. Nine yeah. feet is now pretty standard in apartments. Yeah. Standard. Standard. That's gone up though. Oh yeah, yeah. no, yeah. Eight, yeah. Foot, just eight foot. There was eight foot six. But yeah, yeah. yeah. But we we don't do unless it would be a you know yeah. maybe maybe. But even with that, yeah, yeah, you can have actually more and more, more at nine feet. So. Yeah. And then with the big windows, you really need a little bit of room above the window for yeah. just a trim. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so that's essentially what happens to these roof lights that go up. In one case, we did change the angle on building two. We had one pitch at essentially 30 degrees and another pitch at like 20. And we raised one of those to make them match. So we just thought the 20 looks a little shallow for us. It just looks yeah. shallow. They looked wrong. So we changed that. Um, so what is the differential? You add up all these little bits. Yeah, all this little piece bits. of paper is very little, but in construction, it's not so small. Yes, so they do add up. I guess what I would say to that is we're still uh, only 36 feet to the E, and you know then another. 10 feet from the gable. So we're below the 41 that the special special mm -hmm. permit required to yeah. It was 41 of the, to the you know, that was in the special permit. It's still significant. So we're still below. This, you know, this series of buildings is further east. So from, from your perspective, I'm not saying there's a problem. I don't think there is. But these aren't the ones that back up to uh, the, field. the fields, right? Building seven, which is the one that's really over there, doesn't have gables going in this direction. Yeah. I don't remember built. No, no, it's yeah. the <laughs> well, that, that that three friends. Yeah, but if we oh, approve that, I don't know what's back here again. <laughs> if we approve that, <laughs> every time you no, say yes, no, 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 you guys will be able to do it throughout the entire project. It has like a little gable going in the other direction. It doesn't have any gables going this way. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't have. the time we get to that phase. So I'll just reel those back in right now. Well, I think it's fair to say that the the protocols that you, you went from, uh, you know, the, the original tent to this, which reflects all the interior, you know, the detail you've done, any other building, further buildings are going to reflect that kind of plan. Yeah, they'll be similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. Yeah. I think building seven is only a little different because it doesn't have that Transverse gables, you know, just going to give a part of it. Right, and to Ken's point, gables. that's not the only building that would be seen from all of Sullivan oh, Street oh, High School. So no, if that. these are approved at this yeah. Yeah. design and height, then it'll be set throughout the entire project. And then you won't go all the way down to the body of the project with one small little building, seven that's long. Yeah, I you'll probably that. add something to it to make it look cohesive across the entire project. So. But I think that's what Kendra's saying. Is, yes, right. The only yes, these three are tall and they won't affect her view shed now, but buildings four through seven, once set into your phase, will be taller. Yeah. However, with regard to your specific question about view shed, when we did that view yeah. shed study, we should still be fine. Th three feet and certain sections of the building will not be close to affecting the view shed. Of the horizon. Yeah. From, so from that point. So throughout the entire project, uh, Bill has been leading the charge on percentage right. uh, reduction, percentage height, overall mass and scale. So I would like to hear what, what Bill's thoughts are on this. Bill. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I, I I'm pretty comfortable with everything I'm looking at. I have a couple questions though. <clears throat> um, I'm looking at the uh, north elevation of building one <clears throat> and it looks to me as though forget the gables on the top it looks to me as though the roof the peak of the roof has 
extended, and there's no numbers on my uh, schematic, uh, it looks as though it's higher than it originally was. Can you address that from the ground to the peak? Uh, is uh, it the same as originally approved? The north side of building, the north view of building one or the north? North, the north elevation of building one. Okay. Left side, ground to peak. And, and there's no numbers on my uh, schematic, so I can't see what it is. <clears throat> yeah, so there's, a, there's a large gable on the east end, and there's a large gable on the west end. They're both on the railroad side. Um, and both of those have gone up a little bit as a result of what I was just talking about in terms of the gable getting a little broader, therefore a little taller. And then uh, the floor to floor is getting a little higher, so it's gone up a couple of feet. And, uh, and the 18 inches. Are okay, less than two feet. Huh? And, and one of those things. Oh. Is that the size? I think that's what Bill was asking. What's a little bit? So a little four bit. Feet? No, a little bit is about three feet. By the time you add huh? the floor to floor, and there's you know, the, the difference yeah, between the for flat for roof and the and the, and the roof right here. You, you understand that Eve? Do you know what he's talking about? Yeah. It's it's. I was just so that doesn't. The numbers as yeah. opposed to yeah. a little bit. That's what I was saying. Really the numbers. <laughs> did you hear that, Mr. McBride? The measurement? No, three. I did not. Yeah. Three, three feet. About three feet. About three feet. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Yeah. It's all in cables. It's not at the. Uh, you know, flat roofs, uh, those have only gone up like about a foot because it's a floor, it's a floor to floor. Yeah. Uh, so that is, on a percentage basis, it's a small part of the overall building. Uh, and it's done for practical reasons, I uh, wish we'd known about it before. But like I said, uh, we're still below the, the 41 uh, to the eaves, and we're still below the 10 foot from the eave to the meat. So we still meet that. Uh-huh. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I can I, I can live with that. And we didn't change the mass and scale of the residential parts of the buildings. Uh, that that looks good to me. I have Is that an assumption or have you guys stated that? Well, this is a resident. It's all residential. Yeah. No, no, the, the, the square footage hasn't gotten bigger, correct. Okay. Is that I yeah. think that's what he meant. Yes. Yeah, house bill. That's that's correct. Yeah. So I I I'm pretty comfortable with where we are. Um, um, I mean, the one thing you didn't have until tonight were these color versions of the current plan. So. If, you know, it may be worth people looking through this to kind of look at it and say, okay, does this really represent the character that we were expecting when we approved this? And I think when you look at these, if you take the time, I think you'll find they're better than what you approved. And I would just like to encourage you to think about that. You know, there's transom windows now, there's more detail in the balconies, there's better than down spots that I think add to the character. There's more interesting room configurations. We have some of our second and arch windows that we right. We've got, right. we've got pergolas on the rooms. We've got all kinds of things going on that were represented in many cases, but they just weren't flushed out in the prior drawing. Well, and I think that was part of our approval was to add all. Right. Those. Oh, so exactly. That, that's, exactly. So, that's all and I'm very well. Expecting yeah. that. I'm just no, suggesting yeah. that we've done that. Right. We were expecting. I was expecting windows. I wasn't expecting elevation. Right, I understand. And so, you know, you got to take a little bit of the, you know, kind of positive with what you might perceive to be a negative. But, you know, here's like that parklex or natural wood sign that's, that's come into building two now, because this was all one thing before. And you had to draw up at a higher level of detail. You said, this is right. So we just added that in. Now, we took a little bit off building one when we did that, because again, we didn't think it looked right over there. So there's still, this element still exists on building one. Um, but there's a slight reduction over there, there's a reduction over here, so it gets more successful. And I think as you look through these drawings, you would agree. So I, I would encourage you to do that. So you want to walk us through the one by one? I'm happy to do that. Okay. So Best story These seem to be color-coded, too. These guys, just, or is that just the way they are? Turned? 
No, or is it just white? No, it's just another. Uh, so this is a canal side of building one, uh, where you have terraces on both sides, and you have these little kind of rooftop things going on, where you know, a little portal up here. Mm -hmm. um, we've gotten away from turning the corner on some of these balconies because it gets structurally very difficult. It doesn't really add to the character. We kind of like revealing the corner of the building. We go to the uh, railroad side of building one. This is where we, I think, flip the gables on these. Uh, but otherwise, you can see transit windows occurring on some of these, uh, some of these windows at the top here. Uh, this is the side facing Monroe Avenue of Building One. You can see transoms there, a lot of interest. This color-coded kind of natural wood siding or parklex matches the little rooftop piece. That's a purple up there on the roof. And then the building right behind it matches this. Is that the same thing over here? What is that's oh, actually that's a, a side view. It's okay. a side view of a right. little addition on the top of the roof protection. Uh, again, you know, I think more development on, on the sides. Just adding more yeah, interest. Yeah, sure. This table wants to remind you about that. Mm -hmm. Then you go to building two. This is where we introduced that, you know, additional color on building two because it was a little bit more monolithic. We switched from um, clapboard or horizontal siding to vertical siding in this location. I prefer the vertical. I agree. I think the vertical is better. Two you got to have the mix of both. Yeah. And there is a mix. Yeah. And certainly, yes. I agree. So And it fits well with a mix right there and the vertical. Right. This is a another patio, but three up there. There's three patios up there. So there's a pergola here for this patio, a pergola for that patio. This guy doesn't have a pergola because he just kind yeah. of steps right up there. Um, back side of building two. And where south is? This is the east Frank, road. This yeah. road side. Yeah. Yeah. Road side. There. Yeah. Um, and you can see there's some clabbered siding here. So this is, you know, Side of here, but again, we switched to the switch um, and then the two sides of building two. Here's where we took Which out there's a walkway in between, so we won't be able to see these unless we're in there. Exactly, yeah, right. Right. exactly. Yeah. So there are some balconies that were removed from here, for example, um, because the system makes sense to the balcony, so we just use garage that. access. That's right. garage access. You're driving down this ramp and into the garage here. in there, not on that side. No. So, what is all that? Oh, that's garage access, maybe underneath the ground. No, that's a parking garage. Oh, so yeah. It's not a garage access, it's a parking garage. Yeah. 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 garage. yeah. You won't see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the walkway between the buildings right that's there. Everything yeah. below that is underground. Sort of a, it's the model been. actually was yeah, cut, yeah, so you're yeah, seeing yeah. in the garage, even though you won't be able to see it. And you're also in the original drawing, this material went straight down, but then upward for this big garage door. So we made this look like there was a little shed roof, and then you yeah. added on to the shed roof off. So we just made it look actually a little bit more like it grew organic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, otherwise, this line can be right down to the middle of the whole thing. No, no worries. Yeah. yeah. So, building three. Yeah, Dan had questions on building three last time, and then we'll I'm, stare one. Yeah, so, so we were trying to solve the dumpster problem, and we put the dumpster below grade at the parking level, right? So it's out of sight, you won't see it. The problem with that is when they drive down there to flip the dumpster into the truck over their heads, um, we can't put a space. roof over that part. And we we're going to have our building three enter over the top of where that dumpster sits. Mm -hmm. So because we couldn't do that and keep the dumpster where it was, there was no way else to put it, like other than up on, on, on grade right. somewhere. We took the stair and flipped it to the other side so okay. we could enter the building on the other side. So. That's why those were flipped. Yeah, I didn't have a good answer. It was yeah. really just so you can get access to the building without going over the top of the roof that covers us so that couldn't be that more. We're fighting waste management. Something else. So we did expand this kind of porch like element across the north side of building three. So there's additional masonry here and additional uh, like overhead type doors to enter into that common space. And building three footprint actually got smaller on the second floor. We pushed a portion of it back in to align with the third floor to align with the second floor. So building three, the volume got smaller on some floors, but not all floors, which in some ways compensates for some of the other volume mm -hmm. increases. Um, again, it was really done for planning reasons. We had a travel distance problem. 
Uh, there's only one stair in building three, so with one stair you have limit, limited uh, distance you can go to get to your exit. doesn't apply to the first floor because you're at grade, it applies to second and third. So we had to make the second floor of math. Um, this, is, uh, this is the side facing the dumpster of building three, so that, that abuts building two, you won't see it as much. This is the other side with the stair foot over. Um, Showing the grade that's pitching that back. Correct. Yeah, that's right. That would face out to the So, I mean, I have multiple copies of this. You know, we could talk about it longer. I just, you know, Kendra has something to do. Just like that. But, um, so, what questions do you have? I'm still just chewing on it. I, I mean, I, I, I think that for me, I'd like to see what we approve versus what we've got. I, I, Thank you for that walkthrough. Um, yeah, right. So I, I think that just acknowledging those shifts in addition to three feet. Yeah. And then three feet, you know, is probably only over, you know, just take a guess here, you know, maybe 20% of the roof safety because it's really just where those large gables are, which are on the, only on the railroad side. All the outside pieces are all flat roofs. So they didn't so go up. Like yeah. yeah. And even the center portions of the railroad site didn't grow because yeah. they're not large gables either. It's just those two it's end conditions. Um, so it's a small, relatively small percentage. I know it's not that. Can we talk about that? Am I the only one that. No, you don't like that? <laughs> Dan, anyone? What was that one? Yeah. Little duck build? Honestly, I have a barn on my property and it has the little duck, duck, your duck build, on, quote yeah. unquote. Yeah. Those are very popular. Toys. Yeah, they, and, yeah. I, and I have yeah. a coil that comes out and right. goes up. That, that's an added that detail things. that is like, that That makes it more, uh, less boxy, less square. Um, it adds character to it. I didn't see anything wrong with it if you have an opinion that. that yeah, but historically not, accurate, it is. We're just trying to add some eccentricities to make the project more interesting and more of a conversation piece. Mm -hmm. But it could, yeah. it's not integral to the project. We could do some of It's not a bad one. From this angle, I don't like it. I think yeah. from the, no, when you won't, you rarely see it from that angle. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Especially when you look up at a barn, you're looking at an angle, it does kind of like cone out really nice. It's an extra detail. I was even going to try and find a historic pulley system to, yeah, to yeah, mount yeah, it, just, just for detail. Yeah, yeah. And, and they, on the face of it, they put in a uh, barn door so it would look yeah. like so that's like where you. Hand. Exactly. Yes. There. Yeah. Oh. It's more because that's that, that elevation you're going to see. Yes, on this end. And that's why we added that extra wood in front. Good. Anything else, Dan? Um, no, I don't think I have anything I have, else. I, I said I, I didn't want to talk more. windows, but now I have another question. Um, because we spent a bunch of time in chat. We spent all of the last week going through the windows. And we put specifics into what we were looking for. So and I have not gone through this to see if what we asked for is and here, and I want to be clear with that. Is or is not what we're considering. So the casings will be proud of the siding, like you would request. If you have two different casing sizes, a little narrower for the vertical siding, a little wider for the uh, horizontal siding. We'll have full brick sills. We'll have you know uh, fiber cement sills to extend yeah, out. Brick sills where we have brick. Right. right. Yeah. Right. And we'll have fiber cement sills that extend out beyond the siding where we have fiber cement. I think we understood all the comments and we're implementing them. So right. And I think, in part, you know, our blocks that we're inserting and drawing with the cat power was just, you know, that uh, one section yes. that we pulled out that yeah. looked like it was going to, the water was going to go behind the flashing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's saying that that was just a cat issue. We okay. import like a pre drawn block into the drawing, you know, but if the block is not selected properly, it doesn't actually just line up. For it. Especially now with the new energy project, we will have product installation. That's the biggest installation. So the manufacturers so certainly sort of keep up uh, with their updating, depending because there are so many different conditions. So we, now we have gone in and we exploded it and made sure that it's extended, that 
I mean, no one would build it that way, but now it's um, it wrong. Yes, yeah. it was wrong. So, thank you. And that will be in the building permit approval that yeah. the zoning board will see, not this section of it? That will be in the final construction drawings that will be approved by Bergman that they're working on now. Okay. I'm only asking that so, to put it on the record for Tina because she's not here today. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. What Tina's recommendations were that were put in the meeting minutes, yep. they're incorporating it into the latest drawings. Very good. Um, the park lights. You knew I was going to ask about that. Is that the same stuff that you presented to us last fall when for natural you. wood? Or is that new since the approval of the C of A? Is that new? I don't know. The same. Yeah, I don't know what it last. I thought I brought a piece someday. in with me. Yeah. Right, but I've, I've never heard of it uh, being called park That's a brand it's name. Very, That's a brand natural name. natural wood. Yeah, so it's um, a, And then with your description earlier, I was, I was kind of throwing it. It's a resinous it. product that they put, you know. Plastic. Well, they do it a couple different ways. So it's either made of all these paper layers and resin. Or resin and plastic. But then they put a film on the front. But the one we're looking at actually has a very, very slight texture to it as well. And the color is integral to that film that's in there. So right. we can bring a sample back at some point. To, uh, do that. It's very, very expensive. It's more expensive than wood, yeah. but it will last. And there's Parflex, there's Funnermax, there's Presto, there's a number of different manufacturers that make similar products. Uh, it's just a matter of choosing the one that has exactly what you want. And I would find a oh, nice Italian manufacturer. Uh, I think it's wooden. Um, so we're trying to cut the details from them right now. But yeah, that one is the most realistic, but uh, long and longevity wise. And in some areas where we will be in actually, it will feel more like um, actual. Well, if it's the same stuff that we approved, I'm fine with it. Okay. If, it if it's different and it's been changed since the C of A, then I'd like to see some material. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll be the same as what you approved, or yeah. we'll make, make sure you see it. Yeah. It's 614. Okay. No. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no. Bill? Nothing. No. Ken? Am I supposed to read anything from online? I'm sorry? Is this public where I'm supposed to read something from online? No. No? Okay. Yeah, I think uh, seeing this has been extremely helpful, and I spent a lot of time going through these color coding things and sorting through it, and I appreciate your, your little thread. I was yeah. hoping I'd see something like this. Yeah, I just wanted to, for myself to understand, too, you know, how substantial some of these changes are. Things are classified. Right, right. Because so, you know, we can master pads. Yeah. And I, the only other comment I have is that uh, any you know future ones we, we go into this. This is a lot helpful, more helpful than that. I mean, obviously you have to start somewhere. I mean, at this point we are really close, so I would not anticipate any additional changes. At this point, you mean for building four, five, and six? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh for building yeah, so yeah, yeah. 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 the, the plans are in for these first three yeah. buildings. Yeah. Yeah. As we get that completed and start construction, they're going to continue work on the next yeah. building. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and respectfully, we didn't expect any changes from the original C of A until here. Yeah. So, I would have appreciated a heads up, especially okay. when Dan at our last meeting was pointing out very obvious things that have changed and yeah. we didn't even get the courtesy of a, oh, what uh, happened? Because it wasn't the videos no. that okay. we were all expecting. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the maps and scale that our entire community has been concerned about pretty much since, what, eight? No, you're right. I think, yeah. you know, we recognize that some of these things were happening. We don't see them as substantial, but it's not for us to say, right. and there are Differences. We always do the building to the drawing to the wall, you know, as you move from this to this. Um, and like I said, we're making every effort to make those evolutionary changes better as opposed to worse. But to your point, you want them worse. Like that would be <laughs> silly. Uh, that would be silly. But so so is, you know, your instructions here, you're playing, you're playing the end here. So, so my comment on this would be as we go and look at those 
those other buildings as we go along to say, you know, by the way, we've reversed these. Yeah. This is the new fire, you know, the stairway. That makes yeah, total blah, blah, blah. sense. I, I agree. Okay. I'm, I'm fine. So uh, I'd like to make a motion to accept uh, these plans as uh, provided. I, I would find a motion to amend the certificate of appropriateness to approve the changes to the law. Perfect. You got that? Yes. Before we move forward, then just a question. Um, because again, this isn't just subjective from our mind. This is, you know, the regulatory place that comes to check you. It wasn't even us right. that you asked for forgiveness, not permission from, <laughs> right? That's what happened here. Um, so is there another process for that? Given that you're still working and you said there's the final plan that they're going to do this for um, is there any more wiggle room where changes are going to happen that we're not going to know about and then we can come back here again or we need a final stopping well, ground? Well, like, this is it. What I'm gathering is that they want approval for what they have on the table. Agreed. So, so we don't have to spend any more changes. So if there are more changes, they will have to come back to you to get them what? There will be no more changes. But we haven't gotten the final comments from from Bergman yet. Right. That's why Chris was like, that was a bold statement. No more. Waiting for the final comment. However, group forces us to Bergman has had the plans for two months now. We've been waiting for comments so that we can make the final change. Nothing that they say should really drive changes to the exterior. I think it does. It comes back. We got it. That's So why do we meet today? Because because they are not anticipating any more change. Okay. Correct. And we, we have plans on the table. Yeah. And our construction documents now are almost 100% complete, so it's the right time. You know, it's like Correct. Chris said, if, if Bergman comes back and says, there's an issue here, I will let it be, we'll have to find all the way to the to go. That's right. Too many windows. That was a joke. Yeah, yeah. I was going to make the Lego right. joke like there's no more changes because now the Lego cab bricks are the right size. To right, right. So that's why it kind of works in. Right. Okay, so we have a motion on the table. Do we have a second? Bill will second it. Bill? Uh, I'll second. Okay. All right. All right, Member Wilson? Yes. Member Evans? Yes. Member McBride? Yes. Chair Pollock? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. So you guys have great direction on any future. Yes, we do. Yes. Yeah, it's here. And, and, uh, yeah, we'll be back for future buildings, but these yeah. are what we'll see. And, and, and uh, I'd make a motion that we uh, end the meeting. A second. Okay, so we're definitely not doing the minutes from the last meeting. We're going to 75 in a row. Okay. All right, so Mr. Olson. Uh, yes. Member McBride? Yes. Member Evans? Yes. Oh, next up. Next up. When are you going to be able to approve it? Oh, you'll have to approve it. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Say that again? When will this board convene yeah. to approve those minutes? But we'll have to convene we, again to approve this meeting's minutes. Well, oh. so there will have to be something. <laughs> when that's that said. Ending story. No, no, any board can approve any. Well, that said, you know, do you have enough time? You, you, so you have to leave. I have to go. So I'll continue with the vote on the Okay, so Chair Pollock. Yep. Okay, motion passes. So we'll wait until three people vote for it anyway. So. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, staying a little later, too.